Hello, everyone. This is Jeff Rizzo with the Detroit Lions podcast and Lions Wire. And we are finally up to the defensive side of the football in our training camp previews. We're going to start with the big boys up front. Oh, yeah. Defensive linemen. Defensive tackles. We got some new blood in here. It's going to be a fun topic. Let's go. So, I mean, defensive tackle is weak weak point in years past, and I think that the Lions have done a really good job of addressing the weak point. Obviously, Aleem McNeil coming back, um, looking fantastic. Uh, We saw him this spring. He looks a little bit leaner, um, even more than he did last year. This is a guy who's primed for a breakout campaign. I'm very excited about what Aleem McNeil can do. I think he can threaten nine, eight and a half sacks, that range. Um, be a much more of an impactful all-around player. I think he was very good against the run last year. I think he had situations where he was very good as a pass rusher. I think you're going to see a lot more of that this year. And uh, he's he's poised in a contract year to break out and really make himself earn a lot of money. Uh, and I sure hope that's with the Lions because uh, I, I love it when they reward their own. That's something this regime has taken a lot of pride in doing. And uh, no, no pun intended there. And uh, I, I think McNeil is, is probably going to be the next one in line. Uh, certainly hopeful for that anyways. Um, aside from the fact, I just love the dude's personality. Um, he's, 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 a, he's a fun guy to cover, a uh, fun guy to watch in practice and in games. Uh, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him at training camp. Looking forward to seeing DJ Reader next to him. Although, based on his injury status, we might get a little bit of a delayed gratification on that. This is a guy who's coming in from the Bengals off of a torn quadriceps might not be ready for the beginning of training camp. Um, That's an entirely possible thing. The Lions knew that when they signed him. I love DJ Reader. I covered him when he was with the Texans. Uh, He understands how to be part of an ensemble. He played on a line between Genevieve Clowney on one side, J.J. Watt to his other side. Uh, There's generally somebody else there. Sometimes it was Christian Covington. You might remember him from the Lions uh, training camp anyways. (laughs) Um, He's a really good nose tackle. One of the best one-gap and two-gap defensive tackles in the league. He's very good at at playing as a shaded role. Uh, He can also play heads up if you need to do. There's a whole lot of of versatility that he does on the inside that I think Aaron Glenn, the defensive coordinator, and new defensive line coach Terrell Williams are really going to like. And I also think that his ability to... He's got just enough as a pass rusher that you can do some things with him, some gimmicks with him and McNeil, uh, and it opens more things up. But uh, this is, uh, to me, it reminds me of a poor man's, uh, go back to the the Patriots defensive old, and I'm not talking about the Matt Patricia area. It's it's actually before that. Um, Well, he actually actually might have been part of it. I don't know. Viz Wilfork and Richard Seymour on the inside were both... um, unique enough but good enough to play one another's spots i really hope that we get close to that uh with this with this combination of reader and mcneil and, and i think that potential is there uh, i really do so i'm excited about reader coming in hopefully he is ready to roll by week one but if not there's there's a chance that this team could still be better than they were last year i think we're seeing um levi Anzarike as a wild card Again, he looked great this spring. Uh, but seems to be over the physical and the mental toll of having the neck surgery. And you can tell last year that like he was he was certainly worked out in the weight room and he was physically ready, but I'm not sure that the mentality was there. Um, this is a guy that hasn't played a lot of football lately um, after dealing with the injuries going back to his days at Washington. I think he's ready to take a jump as another as a football player. And I think we will see the best out of Levi Anzarike and what is the last year of his contract, too. He's playing basically for his NFL future, whether it's in Detroit or another spot. I like his chances. Uh, I have written him off in the past, as have a lot of other folks. Uh, I will pleasantly eat my words. Um, and I've told him that to his face. Uh, and he, he, he totally understood it. He got it. So uh, I'm rooting for you, Levi. Uh, make it happen, and you can be the top reserve on this team as a pass rush type of tackle um not a guy who's going to hold his ground all that much against the run that's sort of not what he does he's a little bit of a gap attacker uh and he's got some competition in that this year because they drafted makai wingo out of lsu 
And if you know anything about LSU, when they give you the number 18 on defense, it's because you're the man. You're a dude. And he is a dude. Now, he's an interestingly sized and shaped dude. He's a little over six feet tall. He's about 281 pounds, which means he's a little bit too small to play tackle and a little bit too big to play end. He made it work at LSU. And from what I've seen from him this spring, I'm going over to the practices and mini camps at, at, and uh, rookie mini camp at, at, in Allen Park. I think he can make it work. Uh, certainly enough as a when they go to a a three man a straight three man front, I think he can play that five tech um, the four I uh, role. He can even kick out a little bit further not if you want. Uh, we'll see on that on, on exactly how they use him, but he is basically in the same sort of role and and size. Uh, he's, he's shorter, not as long as John Kaminsky, but the same sort of role projection. And I'm not sure that Kaminsky will be back if he doesn't play better than he did last year. And I say that, again, I'm a fan of this guy. I have loved him since we interviewed him down at the Combine a couple years ago uh, before he was drafted by the Atlanta Falcons. Great reclamation project that, that worked out for the Lions in 2022, but last year was not his best year, and he knows that. Uh, I think one of the things that happened with him was that they played him inside a little bit more, and he... and. The teams got tape on him and they figured out how to attack him when he was, you know, two hands in the dirt, one hand in the dirt, playing a more inside tack uh, than, it would, than it was when he could get a two-way go on a tackle maybe or, you know, on the outside shoulder of the guard and, and see what he could do. Um, he played a little bit more inside, shaded last year, and it didn't work out that well for him. And that's one of the reasons why Wingo is here. We got some competition for that role. Uh, they uh, This is, this is going to be a fight, folks. This training camp battle is one that's going to be very interesting to watch because there's more worthy aspirants than just these guys. Remember, Aiden Hutchinson can play inside. Josh Paschal, who I'm going to include with the edge group, uh, but he probably belongs here as well. Uh, he can play a little bit inside. Uh, I'm not sure we're going to see much of that this year, but you know, we'll see. Um, I, I think the versatility there um, is something that, that Glenn likes and that... Uh, Certainly, Terrell Williams uh, advocates from his days in Tennessee. He likes guys that are able to do multiple things well. Uh, Kaminsky will be given a shot to prove himself and and reclaim that that you know there were some that we've seen dudes in John Kaminsky jerseys, <laughs> which is probably uh, shocking to him as much as it is uh, to the rest of us. But uh, he'll get a shot. Uh, but the, he Levi Wingo. Um, because Pascal fits into there, you can kind of throw him in with that. Um, not all those guys can make the team. There's just not that many roster spots if they're keeping 10 offensive linemen, which I think they will. Go check the offensive line uh, video that I did earlier for that one. Uh, search it out in the archives here. And uh, uh, I think that I laid the case pretty clearly why they will keep 10 offensive linemen, or at least nine. And even then, you're still looking at, like, yeah, there's, there's going to be guys that are cut, you know, you know uh, just looking at the, the the roster here of defensive tackles. I mean, Kyle Pico, veteran, played under Williams in Tennessee. I think he's more of a camp body, but we have seen guys like that, Benito Jones, in the past um, do some things. He's much more of a nose tackle, and I think he is kind of DJ Reader insurance. That's just my, my personal thought on it. Haven't talked to the team about that yet, but uh, he's, he's much more of a nose tackle a traditional nose, and uh, if he's making the team, it probably means that DJ Reader isn't ready, and that's a that's a huge bummer. Um, I don't know. Um, very anxious about the DJ Reader injury situation, as you might be able to tell. Uh, who else we got here? Um, Chris Smith was a guy that I liked last year. Undrafted free agent out of Notre Dame. He shows some things. He earned that spot on the practice squad last year as a rookie. I kind of think he should have gotten a shot to play a little bit last year um, when they were going through, you know, calling up Tyson Alu Alu and basically begging him to come out of um, league enforced retirement because nobody actually really wanted him before that. Uh, but he came in and played and was better right away than some of the guys that the Lions have tried it out recently. Uh, so he's back. He's hungry. I um, mean, we'll see. We'll see. Show me what you got, Chris Smith, because uh, you certainly belong at least on the practice squad again. Uh, and I hope that uh, the Lions will be able to get him through because I do think, you know, this was not a great defensive tackle draft. 
And if teams are going to be looking for young guys that they can maybe build up a little bit, he's a guy that could get claimed off waivers. Uh, you know, just thinking ahead here. Um, hope that doesn't happen because I like what, what Chris Smith offered. A um, couple of the other guys that are listed um, on the tackles. Yeah. Broderick Martin. I know. Big man, third round draft pick by surprise. And I think one of the reasons why it was so surprising was because we saw as a rookie that he just wasn't ready to play. Lions don't have a problem drafting for the future. That's clear. That's what Brad Holmes is doing. Um, the, the draft is not just about the current season. It's about what they can do in the future. And we saw very little out of Broderick Martin last year. Uh, he could not get on the active roster even, when, even with all the issues that they had at defensive tackle. He had problems with pad level. He had problems with assignment recognition. He's got a lot going for him this year, or a lot, a lot, a lot to show that he's picked up. I'm very hopeful for it. Uh, I like Broderick Martin. We interviewed him here on the Detroit Lions podcast uh, shortly after his rookie minicamp, and I'm. I like the guy. It's easy to like the guy. He's a he's a fun guy, you know. Coming but coming out of Western Kentucky, man, he was not ready for the NFL. Let's hope he's made a jump and is at least able to be active on game days this year. Uh, because if he's not, they do have other players that are a lot readier to replace that spot than they were last year. Not at all suggesting that Broderick Martin's roster spot is in danger, but he's gonna have to earn it. He's gonna have to show a little bit more. Uh, otherwise, it could be an uncomfortable conversation that we're having in the middle of August if he's not doing well in preseason. So it doesn't come to that. But uh, again, another guy I'm rooting for. I'm rooting for a lot of these guys. I like these guys. This is a fun room. Uh, and I'm very much looking forward to watching Terrell Williams coach them. This is a guy that comes very highly decorated and recommended to the Lions. Uh, defensive coach, defensive line coach was an area where they had to get better. And I'm I'm very confident that they have. I'm not sure about all these, uh, you know, top 10, you know, this is a top 10 defensive line. I think that also includes in Hutchinson and and Pascal and and Marcus Davenport at edge, um, James Houston coming back at edge. I think that sort of gets lumped in there. I'm just sort of looking at the interior guys, guys who are going to play between the tackles for the most part. I'm hopeful, uh, but uh, there, there's some conditions there that they need to get met before that. But certainly the potential is there for this to be a much better defensive line. Uh, and uh, with that, Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit like, like, and subscribe so I can come to your ear holes automatically. <laughs> you know you want that. And uh, thanks for watching the Detroit Lions podcast. This is Jeff Risen signing out.